give my thoughts on single support using a van. My thoughts on single support is that if the ball is out left a quarter turn, and yet I still need to get to 270, and by the time I get the quarter turn, I should, my right foot should be coming up off the ground. I need to find a way to go from here facing the other direction. And so, how it's difficult, it's tough. But if I'm here and I'm working to here, it's super easy. But then you have to make this quarter turn. So, what I'm thinking about doing, I'm already opposing the force because it's easy. It's already going this way, unless you want to just have, have yourself go forward. Uh, so, that part is a no brainer. But how do you go? If you just do that, then you're just going to keep going out that way or out left. And that's not, that's not helpful. Or if you just give into it, you're going to go out that way and it's not helpful. So how is it that I go from this way, opposing the force, opposing the ball, to 270? Well, we have to then start curling just a little bit. I'm thinking hamstring, hamstring, hamstring. And now, and because I'm thinking hamstring, now my force is going the opposite direction into that little sprint or walk. So I have to be better at that portion of it. So you can mess with the angle too. This is the thing that uh, I am steadily playing with. Can I come off the ground earlier? I just set it up to where the ball isn't at 90 degrees anymore. I set it up like five degrees uh, before that, at 85 degrees or so. Or even you can you can set it up at like 95. You can set it up at 95. So then you're really already to the point where <coughs> it's helping you. It's helping you. It's helping you. And then that that feels like it could be relevant. That could be like the the, the, the hair hair point in which you're making that that change. already at the sector basically it's already I mean if I'm thinking about coming off the ground and getting into single support by the time the ball is here the ball is already at left sector by the time you think about that the ball is already there so I'm always thinking about the anticipatory principles of the ball still so if I am practicing when it's at 90 degrees then I'm making the assumption that the ball is here at like 80 degrees or so because I'm prepping myself to get to here not just thinking it's like okay then uh, ball wine wine and then all of a sudden it gets there it's like oh shit now I have to do I have to anticipate that action from by the time the ball hits zero to the time as and, and then gradually have it happen by the time the ball hits 90 um, when in reality I'm, I'm thinking about the entire in, in the entirety of the rotation of the ball. So if I'm if I'm never not thinking about it, then it's not right. I'm, I'm gonna be late. If I'm not anticipating it, I'm going to be late. So I'm going to be here, but this is just a simple way to practice from single, how I practice from single support to the catch. So I'm single support, I'm against it, against it, I'm rotating and I'm opposing it in this direction now. I'm not using quad. I'm I'm here. Like you're a bull or you're getting out of your blocks or whatever. That doesn't really mean much to me. Uh, I think of the ball being behind my left hamstring at that point. So from here, the ball is in front of my hamstring and then and I use single support to reset the ball back behind my hamstring so i'm going it's in my it's in front of my hands the throw is already done i'm going into single support and i'm going into my next throw so i gotta be and now i'm ready now i'm ready to throw it again here and then once 
I get done, and I'm done here, and I get to single support, now I'm back, and now I'm back, and then I have to think that again. Think that again. I'm not, this, I'm not, I, the, uh, I would say, I would say this, it's just 100% exaggeration. I'm not emphasizing that. All I'm doing is emphasizing the lower body. Because I'm, I could practice there just unconsciously, but the ball is gonna take me here. The ball is gonna take me here. So I have to be wary. I have to be uh, aware and increase my awareness level. Of, uh, I may practice like a particular way, but as soon as the ball starts, a lot, uh, as soon as I allow the ball to start influencing it, influencing the, the movement, then it becomes a completely different thing. It can, it has the potential to be a completely different thing. So, single support is a reset, it's a reset button. Practicing from here, I could practice earlier, but the thing is, is that I'm going to end up stepping out that way instead of that way because it's I'm I'm technically in front of the ball, you know. So if I'm opposing it here, it's going to give me more support. But instead of catching at 270, I'm going to probably end up catching at like not 270, not 180 whatever 45 degrees is from 180, backwards from 270, 235, no, 225, yes, 225, uh, or the back right corner, does not matter, so I would make those distinctions, I can practice however it is that I want to, here's my ball, Here's the ball. I can practice in a generic, uh, basic, cookie cutter, whatever it is, I, uh, perspective, which is when the ball is at 90 degrees, which is fine, or even more exaggerated, practice when the ball is at around like 95 to 100 degrees past me. Uh, the gentleman from Qatar is, is pretty fascinating how he's able to do that. Uh, which is why I would practice here. There's got to be something in it. If the, I mean, if the kid is able to throw 86 meters or so with the, with the junior weight, I mean, there's something to be said about uh, his technique and how he goes about his technique. So that's always something that I want to be uh, aware of and not discredit anything. So, uh, so I'm in the idea that the ball is assisting me ball is assisting me to the catch so I'm not thinking that I'm gonna catch beyond 270 but the thing is is that it's going to assist me to 270 and I have to anticipate 270 I can't just think hey, man, try to turn all the way around because then I mean you'll step outside the ring you don't want to do that so if I'm thinking it's assisting me and I'm coming through and this is super comfortable this is super comfortable now both my hamstrings are active very helpful. Back to basic at straight 90. That's fine. Pose, a pose, right to 270. And I'm solid. I'm solid right here. And I'm catching either flat foot, heel to toe. It doesn't really matter. I haven't really gotten past the first turn in regard to um, in regard to practicing this drill. Uh, just because I haven't got there yet. Or, uh, like a very Ser Sergei Livanov-esque, uh, very Quentin Begot, they, they start their rotation before the ball gets to 90, so they're taking off, almost getting the single support before the ball gets to 90, so, which is fine, but it just makes them work hard makes them work really hard and because the ball is still 
technically behind them. They're ahead of the ball. Just slow. It doesn't mean anything bad. It just means that it's going to deviate their catch position. Their catch position is going to be more here at this 220 angle rather than 270. You can make it to probably, they can, they can probably make it at 270, but it's not something that uh, uh, I'm emphasizing. It's just simply the ball position. I'm practicing where the ball position is. So, say that you get done from single support to the catch, and then you keep practicing single support to catch, single support to catch, and then you get bored, right? Well, I mean, you're in perfect position to practice double support when you get to the catch because the ball is going to be, the band is going to end up being loaded on your right hip and it's going to be pulling you backwards. So this is going to be a perfect time to actually get into the, uh, the perspective of, of uh, staying loaded on that right side. So, okay, so I'm in double support, going into ball is at 90 degrees. I'm going to oppose it, get in the curl, get in the curl. I got my catch, awesome. Now I can feel this pulling me not just backwards, but it's pulling me to the left. So I'm going to be from here, nice, and, and I'm going to work against it. This is super tight. This is getting loose. I'm not worried about that, but it's easy, easy to work like a little right side drill. One of the bigger things is that this side is very dynamic right now because it's going into single support. I want this side to be dynamic. Right side's dynamic. I get into, oh, now I'm in the 90 again. Now I'm at 90. I can make an adjustment because the ball is supposed to be free. I'm in the 90. Curl, and now I'm in position. I'm on the second turn, and then I can practice that. Of course, all exaggerated crap. Not, I'm not worried about, well, that's not the way it's supposed to look. I'm not worried about that. I'm worried about keeping the ball behind my hamstrings, making sure that from approximately zero, the ball is free from zero to 45 degrees, and then I'm working into the ball from 45 degrees throughout the rest of the turn because I need to use the single support to uh, reset myself uh, as a reset in order to throw the ball again. And so the one thing else that this emphasizes is you can't stand up. You can't stand up. It's impossible. I mean, if, if so, I'm sure somebody can. I'm sure somebody can, but that is not efficient. That is not comfortable at all. I would just stay in this active, active position here, and I'm, I'm solid. I'm solid right here, working into the ground, and I'm good. Back into the idea of the ball is now coming out, out left. I'm about to go into single support again. I'm getting into it, and then hitting it again. And uh, the only reason why I'm making sound when I bring my right foot down is because I'm being retarded. I don't care necessarily that that's there. I don't care about that. I want to I want to bring myself into the catch. But for exaggeration's sake, because it's really hard and I want to get that foot down, uh, not get the foot down with silly intention uh, I want to get the foot down because I want to get back to work I don't want to just get it there and then everything is just willy nilly I want to be active every single minute every every degree I want to be active so pose the ball I'm going technically that way with my left side the ball gets to the point where I can't hold it anymore. I get into single support. As soon as I get into single support, I'm going back to my reset. And now I'm in position to work. And I work. And then I'm here. And then I get into single support or double su from double support 
when the ball gets through zero and back back to ninety, as soon as I as soon as I get into singles court, I'm thinking curl again. And so this is a, a cool little drill, along with my double support drills, uh, just to isolate particular situations in the throw, whether it be in front of us, whether it be a quarter turn from us, whether it be at 180. I don't see 180 as being an incredibly relevant uh, position just because it's not something that you can really stop. You're in single support. There's really not a lot that you're doing uh, except I mean, getting in a position for the next throw, using it as a reset. So I, it's just too in between. It's too in between action. By the time you get to 180, the action's already done. The action's already done for single support. And then when you get to the catch, a hole, that's your basic 270. So I almost, I don't, I don't disregard 180. I just more so, I just kind of, if all my action is done at 90 degrees predominantly, then 180 is not as significant to me because I can get all the work done from that everyone talks about from 180 at 90 degrees, and I can just go. That's one less thing for me to think about. I if if I can uh, get the idea started at 90 and then all of a sudden everything at 180 is fine. Then I mean I don't want like I said I don't want to skip it, but I can focus on the thing that's next, which is 270. You know, uh, so I don't even have to think about zero. You know, I just think about 270 and and 90 because 270 is when double support begins for the most part. And where does single support begin? Approximately 90 degrees. So I've, I've uh, simplified it to throw and instead of in four quadrants, I've, fo I, I've, uh, I've reduced it and I've, I've fo I'm starting to focus only on two sections of the throw, which is double support and then single support. And then the anticipation, I need to memorize stuff. And the less I need to memorize, the, the more efficient the throw is going to be. And then I can focus on like the other details with this when I'm not throwing. But it makes it much e I can remember and anticipate two things easier, faster, and uh, more relaxed than I can three things. Um, can I put the third thing back in? Totally fine. Can I put... Uh, can I put six things in? Sure I can, but I mean, is that going to be more of a benefit or a detriment to me? The more I think, I mean, just think of the throw itself. I can, I can do that uh, when I'm voluntarily going slower, but uh, as after two or three turns and the speed starts vol or voluntarily picking up, I'm not going to be able to say what these people five, six within the duration of time that it takes me to do one rotation. So it's it's almost to a point where it's just too much. It's too much. I can focus on those things later. I need to focus on throwing, especially. I, I can do it in the first two turns and then I can stop thinking about it after two turns, but I'd rather think double support, single support, double support, single support, double support, single support. 